Welcome to the Next Step in Care learning series. This video is designed to provide healthcare and social service providers with ideas and guidance on ways to work together with family caregivers. Okay. Um, people are more complete than just their cognitive intellectual selves, and that people with the disease can actually have a really good quality of life. And it's a matter of accepting who this new person is, both for that individual and for their family members. I ran the first day treatment center for people with dementia in New York City, and very often in that room there was tremendous you know, emotional connectedness, social engagement, people loved being with each other, and we accommodated their cognitive deficits so that it really wasn't apparent, and people uh, flourished and thrive in those kinds of environments. So it's not all helpless and hopeless, but I think one of the barriers for, for family members um, accepting it is that they have to work through that emotional component, these profound emotional aspects of, the, of living with somebody who isn't the man you marry. And it's very challenging. Not to mention that people come to this with a host of all other kinds of issues that we get over our helpline. People are facing homelessness, people are facing poverty, people are facing long-standing mental health and substance abuse issues. People are uh, dealing with the effects of, of the aftermath of uh, natural disasters. We have many families now that we're helping um, find new resources because they've been displaced. They're now in a hotel on 42nd Street. They used to live in Breezy Point. They don't know the resources here, so we're helping identify and get them to, to uh, locations. So, um, so my message is that when you're seeing that person with dementia in a hospital or nursing home setting, take a look to the left or right and look at that person who is their family caregiver and understand to some extent, what they might have gone through. And recognize also that there's help and support out there for them. Because the healthier they are, the better they're going to be able to be your partner in care. And they have a very important role as a partner, especially in that hospital setting. Because that person with dementia is cognitively impaired. And if they're ill, their cognition is going to be impaired even more. They're not going to be able to give you a detailed medical history or what medications they take or what doctors they see or what allergies they have. And so you really depend upon that family caregiver to provide that history and that medical background, but also the kinds of things, the interventions that work. If somebody's getting agitated, which is not uncommon when somebody's in a strange environment or they've been, um, or they're in pain, what kinds of um, interventions work? You know, does certain kind of music work? Will somebody, if you give them, you know, pop chocolate in their mouth, is that going to make them feel better? Uh, you know, uh, it's whatever it is. And um, so using them as a resource, uh, but also recognizing that they are in pain, they need help, they need support. and.